Hi, welcome to a brand new week and we'll start with a thought. The family we choose for ourselves is more important than the one we were born into. The people have to earn our respect and trust, not have it handed to them simply because of genetics. Charles DeLint. Wait, back in this room? Well, here's a story. I was shooting an interview earlier and I was all made up and set up here. So I thought, well, let's do our video journal now because, hey, I'm away for three days celebrating Grandparents' Day. It's also Phil and Brooke's first time out of the house with the kids overnight since they moved here a year ago. So we're up island in a place called Nanoose Bay. We rented a house kind of overlooking a scene like this where the kids can have the run of the place. We can enjoy some nice time reconnecting, although we do see each other all the time, but just time together that we haven't had since they stayed with us for a month in July of last year. So let's talk about grandparenting. Rob and I are in a unique situation, but one that a lot of grandparents do find themselves in, in a way, and that is one of welcoming a blended family. Of course, Colin is our grandson, and then two years ago, on the 30th of this month, along came sweet baby Jane. At first, we were like, okay, how will this work? We'll want to be her grandparents, but will we? And then we found that just as we welcomed Brooke into our lives when Phil started seeing her, we just had to open our hearts. And once again, we were the winners here too. I mean, look at these two. At almost seven years old, Colin is an amazing big brother. He dances with her, puts up with getting hit now and then, wrestles with the remotes and all those sibling things. But most of all, he loves her to the moon and back. And he makes her laugh. Even when he's having a sleepover with us, he'll FaceTime her and it'll usually turn a grumpy girl into a happy little sister. <laughs> but I have to tell you about a truly memorable and magical moment that happened a week ago today. We were saying our goodbyes after a family dinner as the kids were all going home, getting ready for Colin's first day in grade two. He ran out to the car and was ready to go, but Jane stayed and gave me her version of a hug where she walks up, puts her face against my legs and says, bye grandma. Then something happened that none of us expected, but we all witnessed. She went over to Rob, put her cheek to his thigh and said, I love you, granddad. Well, Rob started to cry. Tears welled in Brooke's eyes and Phil put his hand on his chest. I just stood back and watched it all happen. This moment, this unforgettable moment, it had a bittersweet element because Brooke's dad is no longer here and he's her granddad too. I was thinking of that in the moment and wondering how her heart was holding up. But the sweetest part of it was seeing a bond that had formed between these two, grand dude and Janie, right before our eyes. A flash that none of us will ever forget when Rob had a little girl tell him that she loves him just as he did so many times a lifetime ago. And then I laughed, remembering what Lauren would do, as I mentioned, and end with, morning has broken. She would say to us both, I love you. And I'd say, oh, thank you, honey. And then with a wry smile, she'd add, I was talking to daddy. I'm waiting for that from Jane. I was talking to grand dude. <laughs> Here's to the joys and gifts of grandparenting in all its forms, the so-called traditional families, and those that are chosen out of love. As Brooke so beautifully put it later, and I've got it here, we're all in this together, and that's the beauty of our family. Loss brought us together, but love keeps us close, and I couldn't have said it better myself. You have a gentle week, and I'll be back with you on Thursday. While we're away, Brooke's going to be putting me on the hot seat, so it should be awesome, or awkward, or awful, one of those awe words. Have a good one.